Where am I? Four, scene one, enter Groomio. And uh, do you know who's at uh, home? House, house, house. Oh, God. Five, five, and all the tired James on all mad masters and all foul ways was ever man so beaten so ever man so rain was ever man so weary i'm sent before to make a fire and they are coming after to warm them now were i a little pot and soon hot my very lips might freeze to my teeth my tongue to the roof of my mouth my heart to my belly, ere I should come by a fire to thaw me. But I, with blowing the fire, shall warm myself, for, considering the weather, a taller man than I will take cold. All or home! Curtis! Who is it that calls so coldly? A piece of <laughs> ice! If thou doubt it, thou mayst side, slide from my shoulder to my heel, with no greater run but my head to my neck. A fire, good Curtis. Is my master and his wife coming, Grumio? Oh, eh? Aye, Curtis, aye. And therefore, fire. Fire. Cast on no water. Is she so hot a shrew as she's reported? She was, good Curtis, before this frost. But, thou knowest, winter tames man, woman, and beast. For it hath tamed my old master and my new mistress, and myself, fellow Curtis. Away, you three-inch fool, I am no beast. I am I, but three inches. Why, thy horn is a foot, and as long as I am, at the least. But wilt thou make a fire? So, or shall I complain on thee to our mistress, whose hand, she being now at hand, thou shalt soon feel to thy cold comfort for being slow with thy hot office. I prithee, good Grumio, tell me how goes the world. A cold world, Curtis, in every office but thine, and therefore fire. Do thy duty. Have thy duty, for my master and mistress are almost frozen to death. There's fire already, and therefore, good Grumio, the news. Why, Jack boy, oh boy, and as much news as thou will fall. Come, you are so full of coney catching. Why, therefore, fire! For I have caught extreme cold. Where's the cook? Is supper ready? The house is trimmed, rushes stewed, cobwebs swept, the serving men in their fresh fustian, their white stockings, and every officer his white wedding garment on. Be the jacks fair within, the jills fair without, the carpets laid, and everything in order. All ready, and therefore I pray thee news. First, no, my horse is tired, my master and missus fallen out. How? Out of their saddles, into the dirt, and thereby hangs the tail. Let's hat, good Grumio. Lend thine ear. Here. There! Ugh. This tis to feel a tail, not to hear a tail. And therefore it is called a sensible tail. And this cuff was but to knock at your ear, and beseech listening. Now I began. Imprimis? We came down a foul hill, my master riding behind my mistress. Both of one horse? What's with to thee? Why a horse? Tell thou the tale. But hadst thou not crossed me, should thou have heard how her horse fell, and she under the horse, thou shouldst have heard in how miry a place has she be bemoiled. How he left her with the horse upon her, how he beat me because her horse stumbled, and how she waded through the dirt to pluck him off me. How she swore, and how she prayed that never prayed before. And how I cried, how the horses ran away, how her bridle was burst, and how I lost my cupper. But many things of worthy memory. And now shall die in oblivion. Thou turn unexpected to thy grave. By this reckoning, he is more shrew than she. Aye, that thou art the proudest of the blind when he comes home. Talk of I this. Call forth Nathaniel, Joseph, Nicole, Philip, Her, Hertop, and the rest. Let their heads be sleekly combed, their blue coats brushed, their garters of an infant 
let them curtsy, not to presume their touch of horse tail, so they kick. Are they all ready? They are. Call them forth. Do hear, ho! You must meet my master to countenance my mistress. Why, she hath a face of... Who knows not that? Thou it seems calls... I call them forth to credit her. I borrow nothing of them. Welcome home, Philip. What grim... Hello, Grumio. How, how now, old man? Welcome you. How now, you? What you? So, who with this much for my first companion? Are all things neat? All things are ready. How near is your master? Even at hand. Yeah. by this. I'm just whacked out here. Even at hand, alighted by this, and therefore be not cock's passion. Silence. I hear my master. Where be these knaves? What? No man at door and a hold my stirrup, nor to take my horse? Where's Nathaniel, Gregory, Philip? All here. Sir, here. Here, sir. Here, here, sir. Sir, here, here. sir. <laughs> here, sir. Sir, here, 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 sir. Ow. Lager, made it unpolished grooms. What? No attendance? No regard? No duty? Where's the foolish knave I sent before? Here, sir, as foolish as I was sent before. You peasant swain, you horse and malt, horse drudge. Did I not bid thee meet me in the park and bring along these rascal knaves with thee? The Nathaniel's coat, sir, was not fully made, and Gabriel's pumps were all unpinked in the heel, and a no link to color Peter's back, and uh, Walter's dagger was not fully three. And then uh, the gum uh, was Adam, Rafe, and Gregory. The rest were ragged, old, and beggarly. And as they are, here they come to meet you. Go, rascals, go and fetch my supper in. Where is the life that lead I led? Where are those? Sit down, Kate, and welcome. Sound, 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 sound. Why, when I say, nay, good, sweet Kate, be merry. Off with my boots, you rogues, you villains. When? It was the friar of orders gray as he forth walked on his way. Ouch, you rogue, you pluck my foot, Ori. Take that and mend the plucking off the other. Be merry, Kate. Some order here. What? Oh. Where's my spaniel Troilus? Sirrah, get you hence and bid my cousin Ferdinand come hither. One, Kate, that you must kiss and be acquainted with. Where are my slippers? Shall I have some water? Come, Kate, and wash. Welcome heartily. You whore son villain, will you let it fall? Patience, I pray you, toward us both one willing. A whore son, beetle headed, flat beard knave. Come, Kate, sit down. I know you have a stomach. Will, will you give thanks, sweet Kate, or else shall I? What's this? Mutton? Aye. Who brought it? Aye. Tis burnt, and so is all the meat. What dogs are these? Where is the rascal cook? How thirst you villains bring it from the dresser. Serve it thus to me that love it not. Ever take it to you, trenchers, cups and all, you heedless jolt heads and unmannered slaves? What, do you grumble? I'll be with you straight. I pray you, husband, be not so disquiet. The meat was well, if you were so contented. I tell thee, Kate was burnt and dried away, and I expressly, expressly am forbid to touch it, for it engenders choler, planteth anger, and better twere that both of us did fast, since of ourselves, ourselves are choleric, and then feed it with such over-roasted flesh. Be patient. T tomorrow shall be mended. And for this night, we'll fast for company. Come, I bring thee to thy bridal chamber. Did you ever see the like? He killed her with her own humor. <laughs> Where is he? In her chamber, making a sermon of continency to her. He rails and swears and rates that she, poor soul, knows not which way to stand, to look, to speak, and sits as one new risen from a dream. Away, away for his coming hither. Thus have I didically begun my reign. Tis my hope to end successfully. My falcon now is sharp and passing empty. Until she stoops, she must not be full gorge, for then she never looks upon her lure. Another way I have to man my haggard, to make her come and know her keeper's call, that is, to watch her as we 
watch these kites that bait and beat and will not be obedient. She eat no meat today, nor none shall eat. Last night she slept not, nor tonight she shall not. As with the meat, some undeserved fault I'll find about making in the bed. Here I'll fling the pillow, there the bolster, this way the coverlet, another way the sheets. I, and amid this hurly I intend that all is done in reverent care of her. And in conclusion, she shall watch all night. And if she chance to not, I'll rail and brawl and the clamor keep her still awake. This is a way to kill a wife with kindness. And thus I'll curb her mad and headstrong humor. He that knows better how to tame a shrew, now let him speak. Tis charity to show. Scene two, Tranio and Hortensio. Is it possible, friend Lucio, that Mistress Bianca doth fancy any other but Lucentio? I tell you, sir, she bears me fair in hand. Sir, to satisfy you in what you have said, stand by and mark the manner of his teaching. Now, Mistress, profit you in what you read. What master read you? First resolve me that. I read that I profess the art to love. And may you prove it, sir master of your art while you sweet dear prove mistress of my heart quick procedures marry now tell me i pray you that durst swear at your mistress bianca loved none in the world so well as lucentio oh despiteful love unconstant womankind i tell thee lucio this is wonderful mistake no more i am not lucio nor a musician, as I seem to be, but one that scorns to live in this disguise for such a one as to leaves a gentleman and makes a god of such a cullion. No, sir, ah, uh, that I am called Hortensio. Ah, uh, Signor Hortensio, I have often heard of your entire affection to Bianca. And since mine eyes are witness of her lightness, I will with you... If you be so contented, for swear Bianca and her love forever. See how they kiss at, and court? Signor Lucentio, here is my hand, and here I firmly vow never to woo her no more, but do forswear her, and as one unworthy all the former favors that I have fondly flattered her withal. And here I take the unfeigned oath never to marry with her, though she would entreat. Fie on her, see how beastly she doth court him. Would all the world but he hath quite forsworn. For me, I may surely keep mine oath. I may be married to a wealthy widow ere three days pass, which hath as long loved me as I have loved this proud, disdainful haggard. And so farewell, Signor Lucentio. Kindness in women, not their beauteous looks, shall win my love. And so I take my leave in resolution, as I swore before. Mistress Bianca, bless you with such grace as longeth to a lover's blessed case. Nay, I have ta'en you napping, gentle love, and have forsworn you with Hortensio. Fenio, you jest, but have you both forsworn me? Mistress, we have. Then we are rid of Lucio. I faith he'll have a lusty widow now that shall be wood and wedded in a day. God give him joy. Ay, and he'll tame her. He says so, Tranio? A faith he has gone unto the taming school. The taming school? What? Is there such a place? No, I, mistress, and Petruchio is the master that teaches tricks Eleven and twenty long to tame a shrew and charm her chattering tongue. Oh, master, master, I've watched so long that I'm dog weary. But at last I spied an ancient angel coming down the hill will serve to turn. What is he, Biandello? Master, a mercantante or a pedant. I know not what. But format is apparel and gait and countenance, surely like a father. And, and what of him, Tranio? If he be credulous and trust my tale, I'll make him glad to seem Vicentio 
and give assurance to Baptista Manola, as if he were the right Vicencio, take in your love and lay it, and then let him alone. God save you, sir. And you, sir, you are welcome. Travel you far on, or are you at the farthest? Uh, sir, at the farthest for a week or two, but then up farther as Rome, for as Rome, and so to Tripoli, if God lend me life. What countrymen, I pray? Of Mantua. Of Mantua, sir. Mary, God forbid, and come to Padua, careless of your life. My life, sir, how I pray, for that goes hard. Tis death for anyone in Mantua to come to Padua. Know you not the cause? Your ships are stayed in Venice, and the Duke, for a private quarrel twixt your Duke and him, hath published and proclaimed it openly. Tis marvel that, but that you are but newly come, you might have heard it else proclaimed about. Alas, sir, it is worse for me than so, for I have bills for money by exchange from Florence and must here deliver them. Ah, uh, well, sir, to do you courtesy, this will I do, and this I will advise you. First, tell me, have you ever been at Pisa? I, sir, in Pisa I have often been. Pisa renowned for grave citizens. Uh, among them know you one Vicencio? I know him not, but I have heard of him, a merchant of incomparable wealth. He is my father, sir, and sooth to say, in countenance somewhat doth resemble you. As much as an apple doth an oyster, and all one. To save your life in this extremity, this favor will I do you for his sake. And think it not the worst of, and think it not the worst of, and your fortunes that you are like to serve Asensio. His name and credit shall you undertake. And in my house, you shall be friendly lodged. Look that you take upon you as you should. You understand me, sir. So shall you stay till you have done your business in the city. If this be courtesy, sir, accept of it. Oh, sir, I do, and will repute you ever the patron of my life in liberty. Then go with me in to make the matter good. This, by the way, I, I let you understand, my father is here, looked for every day, to pass assurance of a dower in marriage, twixt me and one Baptista's daughter here. In all their circumstances, I'll instruct you, go with me to clothe you as becomes you. Scene three, Catherine and Grumio. No, no, forsooth, I dare not for my life. The more my wrong, the more his spite appears. What, did he marry me to famish me? Beggars that come unto my father's door, upon entreaty have a present alms. If not elsewhere, they meet with charity. But I, who never knew how to entreat, nor never needed that I should entreat, and starved for me, giddy for lack of sleep, with oaths kept waking and with brawling fed. And that which spites me more than all of these wants, she does it under name of perfect love. As who should say if I should sleep or eat to a deadly sickness or else present death? I pray thee, go and get me some repast. I care not what, so it be wholesome food. What say you to a neat foot? Tis passing good. I pray thee, let me have it. I feared it's too choleric a meat. How say you to a fat tripe finely broiled? I like it well, good Grumio, fetch it me. I cannot tell, I fear it's choleric. What say you to a piece of beef and mustard? A dish that I do love to feed upon. I but the mustard's a little too hot a little. Why then the beef and let the mustard rest? Nay, then, I will not. You shall have the mustard, or else you get no beef of Grumio. Then both, or one, or anything thou wilt. Why, then, the mustard without the beef? 
Go ahead and get the gone, thou false, deluding slave. That feeds me with the very name of me, shadow on thee, and all the pack of you that triumph thus upon my misery. Go get thee gone, I say. Affairs, my Kate. What? Sweeting all a mort? Mistress, what cheer? Faith as cold as can be. Look up thy spirits. Look cheerfully upon me. Here, love, thou seest how diligent I am to dress thy meat myself and bring it thee. I'm sure, sweet Kate, this kindness merits thanks. What? Not a word? Nay. And thou lovest it not? And all my pains is sorted to no proof? Here, take away this dish. I pray you, let it stand. The poorest service is repaid with thanks, and so shall mine before you touch meat. I thank you, sir. Signor Petruccio, fie! You are to blame. Come, Mistress Kate, I bear you company. Eat it up, all, oh, Hortensio. If thou lovest me, much good do it unto thy gentle heart. Kate, Eat a page. Now, my honey little, will we return unto thy father's house and revel as bravely as the best with silken coats and caps and golden rings with ruffs and cuffs and farthingales and things, scarfs and fans and double change of bravery with amber bracelets, beads, and all this knavery. What? Hast thou dined? The tailor says thy leisure to deck the body with this ruffling treasure. Come, Taylor, let us see these ornaments. Lay forth the gown. Oh, yeah. What news with you, sir? Here is the cat your worship did to speak. All right. This was molded on a porringer, a Hi. velvet dish. Fie, fie, tis lewd and filthy. Why, no. tis a cockle or a walnut shell, a knack, a toy, a trick, a baby's cap. Away with it. Come, let me have a bigger I will have no bigger. This doth fit, fit the time. And gentle women wear such cap as these. When you are gentle, you shall have one too, and not till then. That will not be in haste. Why, sir, I trust I may have leave to speak. And speak I will. I am no child, no babe. You better have endured me, say my mind. And if you cannot, best you stop your ears. My tongue will tell the anger of my heart, or else my heart, concealing it, will break. And rather than it shall, I will be free, even the uttermost, as I please, in words. Why, thou sayest true. It is a paltry cap, a custard cuffin, a bobble, a silken pie. I love thee well in that thou likest it not. Love me or love me not. I like the cap, and it I will have or I will have none. Thy gown? Why, uh, come, Taylor, let us see it. Um, Mercy God, what masking stuff is here. What's this? A sleeve? It is like a demi cannon. What, up and down, carve like an apple tart? Here's snip and nip and cut and slish and slash like to a censor in a barber's shop. Why, what in devil's name, Taylor, callest thou this? I see she's like to have nothing, neither cap nor gown. You bid me make it orderly and well, and according to the fashion of the time. Marry and did, but if you be remembered, I did not bid you mar it to the time. Oh, go so, hop me over every kennel home, for you shall hop without my custom, sir. I'll none of it. Hence, oh. make your best of it. Oh, no, I never saw a better fashion gown, more quaint, more pleasing, nor more commendable. Be like you mean to make a puppet of me. Why, true. He means to make a puppet of thee. She says your worship means to make a puppet of her. Oh, monstrous arrogance, thou liest, thou thread, thou nimble. 
a yard, three quarters, half yard, quarter nail. I'll flee the knit, the winter cricket thou. Wow. In mine own house with a skein of thread. Wow. Away thou rag, thou quantity, thou remnant. For I shall be so meet thee with thy yard as thou shalt think on pratting whilst thou livest. I tell thee, I that thou hast marred her gown. Your worship is deceived. The gown is made just as my master had direction. Grumio gave the order how it should be done. I gave him no order. I gave him the stuff. But how did you to desire it to be made? Mary, sir, with needle and thread. But did you re not request to have it cut? Thou hast faced many things. I have. Face me not. Thou hast braved many men. Brave not me. I will neither be faced nor braved. I say unto thee, I bid thy master cut out the gown, but I did not bid him to cut it to pieces. Ergo, thou liest. Why, here is the note to, the fa to of the fashion to testify. Read it. <clears throat> the note lies in throat, if it says I say so. It says, in premis, a loose-bodied gown. Master, if ever I said loose-bodied gown, sew me in the skirts of it and beat me to death with the bottom of a brown thread, I said, Gown. Proceed. I would take small compass cape. I confess the cape. And with a trunk sleeve. I confess two sleeves. The sleeves curiously cut. Hi. Ah. There's the villainy. Error, ah. error in the bill, sir. Error in the bill. I commended the sleeves to be cut out and sewed up again. And that I'll prove thee if thy little finger be armed in a thimble. Oh, this is true that I say, and I had thee in a place where thou should know it. I am for thee straight. Take thou the bill, give me thy met yard, and spare not me. God of mercy, Grumio, and then he shall have... Wow, wow. Well, sir, in brief, uh, the gown is not for me. You are in the right, sir. Is for my mistress. Go, take it up uh, unto thy master's use. Villain, not for thy life. Take up thy mistress' gown for thy master's use. Why, sir, what's your conceit in that? Oh, sir, the conceit is deeper than you think for. Take up thy mistress' gown to thy master's use. Oh, fie, fie, fie. Potencio, say thou wilt see the tailor pay. Go take it hence. Be gone and say no more. A tailor, I'll pay thee for thy gown tomorrow. Take no unkindness for his hasty words. Away, I say. Command me to the my master, thy master. Well, come, my Kate. We will unto your fathers, even in these honest, mean habiliments. Our purses shall be proud, our garments poor, for tis the mind that makes the body rich. And as the sun breaks through the darkest clouds, so... Honor pureth in the meanest habit. What is the jay more precious than the lark? Because his fathers are more beautiful? Or is the adder better than the eel? Because his painted skin contents the eye? Oh, no. Good king. Neither art thou the worse for this poor furniture and mean array. If thou countest it shame, lay it on me. Therefore, frolic, we will henceforth to feast and sport at thy father's house. Go, call my man, and let us straight to him, and bring our horses unto Long Lane End. There will be there will, will we mount, and thither walk on foot. Let's see. I think tis now some seven o'clock, and, well, we may come there by dinner time. I dare say, I dare assure you, sir, tis almost two, and twill be supper time ere you come there. It shall be seven ere I go to horse. Look, what I speak or do or think to do, you are still crossing it. Sirs, left alone. I will not go today, and ere I do, it shall be what o'clock I say it is. Why, so this gallant will commend the sun. 
and oh, scene four, Intertronio and the pedant dressed as Vincentio. <laughs> <laughs> 